transpired that we both had worked in theatre and we both loved this one particular exhibition that happened in the Royal Academy of Arts in Bristol, which I actually had a small part in. I think you've got something there actually, Ian, with the tapping into the water levels. Could do something. So we just, within an hour, we thought, right, we know, we know, let's, let's do it. We'll... So that's how it started, really. I think we were, what we were trying to get at when we chose the title of the Blue Hour was that in between time, um, it's about 50 minutes, something like that, where the light goes a very, very particular blue and it's been used um, by artists in the past, by writers, um, and it's before dawn, and it's before the sun sets as well. I'm a woodworker and a filmmaker, and I also do strange things with sound. It seems to be a really good match because we we have very different skills. I mean, she's a, I would say, a true artist. She obviously lives her art, and I think she, you know, we've given ourselves. I think we've given each other the space to do what we do best. And then work on an idea, a central core idea that we've, we've kind of worked towards, really. You always find out that the story creates itself, and there are links and threads yes. between the stories that carry the whole thing through. And I think we've got those links. It's, it's not an immediately conscious act. But I think that's, um, that is part of the artistic process. Uh, Everything to me is, is kind of this mist. And I can I can't see it properly, what, but it's still going what it on. is. But I know it's there somewhere, and it's yeah. about finding those links, those bits that pull the whole yes thing together. The more I get on, I'm just more interested in pure sound. What you can do with it, and making my own sounds, and recording my own sounds, and manipulating it. I think that's where my interest really lies now. I still play with synthesis. But I do like the idea of capturing my own sound and then doing something with it, turning it into a, a piece of a soundscape. Time is quite an important element in the in the film and in the whole thing of that, you know, the ticking clock and all of that kind of thing. Ouch. So it's this now is loose. Successfully, yeah. it's down to like milliseconds where one thing ends and something else starts. It can be seen on a purely artistic basis as a very exquisite, specific time, but it can also be seen on a wider level as to, you know, that, that apex, that point, does it go this way or that way? So you're going to put them onto, onto a backing, or do you want to make well, a, a frame for the whole lot to go in? And I want it almost like a pin board. Yeah, okay. The elements that are in the uh, installation feature in the film quite a lot so that there is that they're they're not two separate things they're completely connected so one is reflecting the other so they're very much tied in with one another and the shipping container is the perfect environment to present people with a series of images and objects almost like a piece of poetry whereby you have to fill in the gaps. You know, you're, you're being given this material and you have to just make of it what you can. I have to wait and see.